What's going on everyone, Dots here, and today I have an updated user interface and add-ons guide for you guys for the Elder Scrolls Online Greymore patch. If you've been following my user interface for a while, you would know that I really haven't changed it all too much from patch to patch. Some add-ons I've installed, some add-ons I've removed, but it's always been like little minor things. The core of my UI has been pretty much the same for a long time now, uh, but I've been getting asked if there's been any updates or changes to my user interface, and so I figured, you know what? I'll go through, remake this guide just to make sure that you guys know my exact updated uh, UI so that if you do want to duplicate my UI for yourself, you absolutely can do so. We're going to go over the add-ons and what they do and then go over the specific configurations for my entire UI, uh, both the add-ons and the UI itself. Thankfully, the add-on configurations are pretty minor. I really haven't changed much in the uh, add-on settings with the exception of some, you know, some really minor things, but for the most part, the add-ons are pretty much just plug and play. So the first one that we have is, of course, Action Duration Reminder, the only add-on that I, I legitimately could probably not live without. And what it does is it adds duration counters to my skills when I use them. So as you can see, I used my armor buff, Boundless Storm, and it put a number on the skill to show how much time is remaining on the skill. And the good thing is that when you swap bars, it will show, you know, above my HP bar so I can know, okay, you know, I still only have five, four, three, two, whatever seconds left on my Boundless Storm so I can swap to my back bar and refresh it before it runs out. It's just an incredibly helpful add-on to keep track of your buffs and debuffs. It's really, really good, and I recommend that everybody install it. I have Zirconian's add-on selector, which has been probably one of the best add-ons I have. It allows me to create basically add-on packs so that I can uh, um, activate and deactivate add-ons in batches. So, for example, I have four different profiles. Uh, Cyrodiil and Battlegrounds, when I'm using Master Merchant, when I'm doing group PvP, and when I'm doing PvE. And literally, all I do is select the different packs that I made for myself, and it will automatically... Uh, select or unselect add-ons that I want. I just hit reload and boom, I have that desired add-on pack. It's incredibly straightforward to use. It's a really, really handy add-on for if you do a lot of different things and want to load and deload add-ons, which is really helpful because for those of you who don't know, ESO is not traditionally known for having great performance and add-ons do make it a little bit worse. So when you're trying to PvP with a lot of add-ons on, it can make it really hard on your PC. So what I like to do is specifically when I PvP, I like to turn off a lot of different add-ons that I do not need when I'm in a PvP environment. So Zirconians makes it a really, really easy uh, easy thing to do. I also have Assist Rapid Riding. This is one that I get asked about a lot on my stream. And basically what this add-on does is that whenever I mount up, as long as I have Rapid Riding unlocked from the Assault skill line, and for those of you who do not know, it is one of the skills in the Assault skill line, is Rapid Maneuver. As long as you have Rapid Maneuver unlocked, you can basically set it up so that any single time you mount, Rapid Maneuver is placed on your bars. You are then able to use Rapid Maneuver, and then the game it takes it off your bars. So it just allows you to get from point A to point B a lot quicker without having to manually drag it and drop it off on and off of your bars do keep in mind that if you do get in combat while rapids is transitioning on your bars it can get stuck there that is something to keep in mind so just be very very careful when you are mounting and dismounting certain places the next two add-ons i have are asylum sanctorium status panel and asylum tracker these are two add-ons i highly recommend if you're trying to do vas plus two really just makes keeping track of all the information in the trial really easy that was a progression that my guild was working on so i use those add-ons for that reason i also do have bug catcher basically what bug catcher does is it catches bugs anytime like a bug or louis error or something or louis error, excuse me would come up on your screen disrupting your gameplay the bug catcher just catches it basically stores it so if you so desire you can go look through them but it just makes it good so that if you do get a, uh, a ui issue or problem it doesn't disrupt your gameplay now one thing i'm just going to shoot off to i know people are probably wondering like oh but that's some of these add-ons are out of date and blah it doesn't it doesn't matter um if some add-ons can be out of date and still work perfectly fine, as long as you do allow out-of-date add-ons, you shouldn't have any issues. Sometimes from now and then, certain out-of-date add-ons will obviously cause problems with the game. But, you know, for me, I still use add-ons even if they're out of date until they cause a problem. The next add-on that I have is Champion Point Respec. Uh, this is part of my little package that I use to basically switch specs. So what I do is I go into here and it brings up my Champion Point Respec so I can select CP Configurations. So I have a PvP CP configuration and a PvE CP configuration. 
So if I ever want to load this, uh, I would just click load selected configuration and it will load it on up and I'll pay the gold cost. If I want to go back to PvP, I do this, load selected configuration, and bam, can load the PvP one. So all you would do is place your champion points, save configuration, bam, give it a name, and you're good to go. Just really helps me switch between my different CP configurations really easily. We have combat metrics, which is your primo DPS add-on for tracking how much damage you do and learning all of the variety of things about your parsing so you can see if you bring up combat metrics you keep in mind you need to create a keybind for this in your keybinds to bring this window up and you can basically bring this up and find out any bit of information you need to know about a fight with either another player or with most uh most typically used either a target dummy or a trials boss the next add-on that I have is Constellations. Constellations I, I don't really use all that much except for when I'm first setting up characters, and it's, I think it's more helpful for lower CP players. Uh, basically what it does is you can do a DPS parse with combat metrics, and then you can import it into Constellations, and it will run a uh, it will run some math on the parse that you did, and it'll tell you for your specific build how to best optimize your blue damage CP. So it's really, really good. Um I use that a lot when I was first getting, you know, into ESO and when I was first learning about CP configurations. And sometimes I will use it if I want to optimize it a little further. But this is an add-on that you really only need to use once when you first are setting up your character to get that configuration. And then you can pretty much disable it. The next add-on that I do use is Daily Alchemy. It just allows me to do um, alchemical writs because Dolgobins does not do it. So I just use Daily Alchemy for that. We do have Dolgoman's Lazy Writ Creator. This just lets me do all my writs with a singular click. Uh, if you do writs on a regular basis, which you should because they do allow for good gold gain, um, you wouldn't be able to... I, I can't do them without Dolgoman's. Uh, it just makes it too fast to, to not install. It's just literally you walk up to a station, you use it, and it automatically does your writs if you have them in your quest log. Really, really great add-on. The next item that I have is Dark UI, which is what gives my UI this night mode appearance. It's absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite add-ons and just makes the UI look really cool and really, really sleek, which I do like. The second part of my respec package is Dressing Room. So Dressing Room, again, another add-on that you need to make a keybind for. And basically what you do is you just bring it up and again, you can make different specs. So I have a PvP spec with my gear and skills, a trial spec with my gear and skills, a solo PvE spec with gear and skills. So basically I can just select set one and it'll put everything on and I'll swap bars and it would put my back bar on. If I wanted to switch to my trial setup, I would just click this. It'll put on my gear, put on my skills, swap bars, it'll put on the back bar. It's just, it's a really, really good add-on to use. So between champion point respec and dressing room, I'm totally able to change my entire build with just a couple of simple clicks. The next add-on that I have is Gray Skull. And what Gray Skull does is it puts the little spell damage counter at the bottom right, as you can see. So just so I can keep track of my spell damage when I am uh, in a fight, you could also do change it to weapon damage as well for your stamina characters. And it also gives me some really cheeky tip lines when I die, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, gives you a lot of BM tip lines when you uh, when you are dead on your death recap. So that's pretty funny to also do that. We have inventory insight, which just allows me to look into my inventory across multiple characters. That is the wrong key bind. Which one is it? It's been a little bit. So. This just allows me to look into my inventory across multiple characters so I know exactly what I have and where I have it. Uh, this is really helpful for if you play multiple characters or do a lot of building. So you can always track and find where all of your gear and variety of things are. It's just so that you, uh, you know, if you want to move gear from one character to another, you can go, okay, which character has that gear or which storage container is it in and just find it in a pinch. Uh, we also have map pins. Map pins basically just replaced my Sky Shards, Lore Books, and Destinations package way, way back when. Um, and it just puts all of the variety of map pins you can potentially want on your map. It also does do Sigic portals as well, which is pretty sweet. Um, and it's just your, your best map add-on. We also do run Master Merchant. I typically only run Master Merchant when I'm actively doing trading or just kind of sitting around. Um, and Master Merchant is your primo trading add-on. It basically will track all of the sales in your guild store. And it will keep data on how much items sell for so that you can very easily list items for sale for market price when selling them on your guild trader. This is a resource hog on your computer, though, so I definitely would not recommend running this in trials or PvP. But if you're just running around, you know, op overland or something, good, it'd be good to keep this on just so that you could uh, continually collect data. Um, I do use me at stealth text. Basically, what this does is it just gives me some stealth text when I'm stealthing. So it tells me that I am successfully hidden and it just displays it there. 
Um, I just think you find that it is a lot more reliable to look at this than using the little eye icon on the default UI. Uh, so I do like it for that reason, especially when playing uh, something like a Nightblade. I do use Piece of Candy for when I do PvP with my guild. Um, this is just an ultimate tracking add-on. Very simple. Um, if you're also a follower of somebody in a PvP group, I would also recommend one of two add-ons, either Lights of Meridia or Papa Crown, allowing you to, and you can basically set it up to where you can just only see the, like uh, on Lights of Meridia, you can set up to only see the group leader, a huge beam of light above them. So one of those two add-ons will just basically allow you to more easily follow your group leader. So something to keep in mind if you do run PvP groups. Uh, but Piece of Candy is my group's uh, choice of add-on for ultimate tracking. I also do use Potion Maker. This very easily allows me to create a variety of potions when I'm at a alchemical station. So basically go to it and it'll bring up this huge window that shows me um, the different types of uh, effects for both either potions or poisons. I can select what effects I want, hit search, and it'll tell me if I have the reagents to make those potions. I also use Raid Notifier, which is your Primo Trials rating add-on for telling you when things are going to happen. Really, really important add-on to have if you do any sort of trials. Uh, we have Tau's AP session. What this does is it basically is a kill tracking add-on for when I'm PvP, keeps track of my group's kills, my personal killing blows, uh, how much AP I've gained in a session, and how much I'm gaining per hour. Just a fun PvP add-on to have to keep track of what you're doing. We have Yurik's skill point finder, which is what I use when I am actively looking for skill points to see what skill points I already have uh, grabbed and which ones I still have left to get. So if you're creating a character and you're looking for skill points, this is a really good one to have. I use Votan's Keybinder to make my keybinds account wide. Really, really good add-on for that purpose. I don't know how that isn't in the base game yet, so I do use an add-on. We have Votan's mini map as well, which gives me my mini map on the right side. Um, again, something that I feel that I need to have, so I do like to run it. I also use Votan's search box. Votan's search box adds this little um Magnifying glass here to allow you to actually search for things in your bag, which again is another add-on I could not live without because, you know, you have such big inventories with a lot of items in ESO, so it just really makes it helpful to be able to search your bags, bank, whatever. I also use yet another compass for when I PvP with my group. It basically puts a small compass on the right side of my screen so that I don't have to look at the one that is up top, which can be sometimes hard, like, you know, in PvP, um... To basically track and you would have to kind of you know move it side to side to see which direction you're heading in but yet another compass puts a nice small one right here that i'm able to just follow and track much more easily to get a better uh he quick look at what direction my group's heading in so i can make better calls we also do use weapon charger weapon charger is the single greatest add-on <laughs> with the exception of some of the other ones that i also think are great oh my god but this one man life-changing add-on weapon charger automatically charges your weapons as they lose charge i have not charged a weapon in literally months it's been an absolutely fantastic add-on to have so especially if you use something like an infused weapon or torigs um and or torigs excuse me it's just really really helpful to have um but everybody can take advantage of this man it's so nice to not have to ever charge my weapons so in terms of the um my actual user interface settings um I personally run my graphics on high, basically, but I just turn off Bloom, so that's why it looks like it says uh, custom. Audio-wise, I just turn off the music, and I run my master volume at 37, because that's just what sounds good with my stream. Uh, nothing else I've really changed, though. I do turn on uh, subtitles, though, just so I can see some subtitles for the for videos, that is. Uh, gameplay, I do have custom colors turned on. I always get asked about, oh, Dots. I see that your enemy colors are bright pink. Is that an add-on? No, it is not. It is just through the base game. So if you come into gameplay and come here, you can see the different colors that I have on the ground. I don't know why that looks white. Okay, there we go. Um, so you can see what the different colors look like. So you can turn on custom colors and set them to be whatever you want. I turn off double tap to dodge. I use a singular keybind to dodge. Ground targeting range lock is on. Prevent attacking innocence is on. Quick cast ground abilities. Definitely turn this on. It makes it so that whenever you have ability that targets the ground, like liquid lightning or eruption, it just automatically quick casts it wherever your mouse pointer is. And especially with how laggy ESO is, it makes it easier to have to do less button input so the server can lag a lot less. So I definitely recommend having that on. Gamepad mode, I turn off because I use keyboard and mouse. Uh, auto loot I turn on and then that's this is what the rest of those settings look like uh, in terms of camera I don't believe I've changed anything interface I do prefer user ID uh, all this shit is on I don't run chat bubbles and I do have the performance and latency counter here at the bottom left turned on just so that I know how badly I'm lagging in a given session 
nameplate to turn that on and leave the default settings on, health bars to turn on and leave the default settings, um, and then alliance indicator, I just have the default settings as well. Social, I just turn off the profanity filter. Turn off leaderboard notifications. This is something that new players ask about a lot. I constantly see stuff from my guild. It's really annoying. I, can I turn it off? Just simply turn this off, and you will not see any of those notifications from your guild members or friends anymore. Uh, for combat, this is another one I get asked about. Ability bar and attribute bars. How do you get them to always show? You come here and change them to be always show. Resource numbers, I do number and percent on all of my pools. Active combat tips automatic. Ultimate number, I turn on. Combat text I turn on as well. I think ESO's combat text is great, so I just turn that on and leave it all as default. And then for my specific configuration, I do show buffs and debuffs, but I only show target debuffs. My self buffs, I'm able to keep track of myself via action duration reminder. I don't really care about seeing my Munda Stone, so I don't turn on long effects. I don't care about seeing permanent effects, so I just do always show and show target debuffs if you also want to see maybe debuffs on yourself you could also turn on self debuffs but i don't really care about seeing that so just because i know what a lot of the different spell effects look like um so for me personally i just do only target debuffs uh in terms of add-on settings action duration reminder we've turned on multiple target tracking uh clear when combat ends definitely turn this off this was on as a default and i found it ridiculously annoying so i turned it off um, in terms of shift bar, you absolutely want to enable the shift bar, and then you can do shift bar location, move shift bar. Now, the reason that I recommend you doing that is because as a default, right, let's just use Boundless Storm as an example. If I was to swap bars, by default, what it would do is it would put the Boundless Storm icon right above my Haunted Curse and bump up my health bar. Now, I don't know about you guys, I find that incredibly annoying. So basically, I clicked my move shift bar and just moved it directly above my HP pool so that that thing isn't constantly bouncing up and down in combat. Um, so I just clicked move shift bar and shifted it right above my HP pool. Otherwise, I don't think I did anything else. Assist rapid riding, I have ability slots to use as my number five key. Enable auto switch upon mounting and dismounting on. Uh, only auto switch and not PvP zones so off. These are turned on. How long before effect fades is, I think, zero. I think I've also tried this at five. You can mess with this to kind of see... Um, get it to a, a point where the timer is comfortable for you uh asylum tracker i don't think i've changed anything as far as i know uh bug catcher i've changed nothing um no just haven't haven't changed anything uh champion point respect i've changed nothing combat metrics uh turn off a pvp on light mode off auto uh, excuse me Light mode and PvP on. I mean, this doesn't matter because it's turned off in PvP, so who cares? Fight history is 5. Saved fight memory is 10. Uh, this stuff is all on. On, 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 on. Uh, allow notifications on. Show pets on. Scale of fight window 100. And then I also have the live report window on. That's what you see at the top left when I'm just in my... Um, just, like, messing around here so I can see, the like, a live view here at the top left of what's going on. So I just ha have that turned on. Because I think at a, at a default, it's off. So I do turn on the live report window. Uh, lock it, compact, 100 scale, 95 opacity. Show DPS on, single target DPS off, HPS and overheal off, HPS on, incoming DPS, and this stuff's all on. And then this is all off. Daily alchemy, I made no changes. Dark UI, I made no changes. Uh, dressing room, I normally will just simply set the... Um, I turn off... Uh, excuse me, I turned off... Normally, I'll actually turn these on... Uh, unequip gear slots on, clear empty skill slots on, uh, set skill set skill set buttons for active bar only on, font size 18, skill icon 35, show chat messages on, and then I'll just normally do the number of rows and columns based off of how many builds I make, just because I don't want to see this huge thing of empty uh, builds. Grayskull, I just turned to spell damage, inventory insight, uh, don't believe I changed anything, I think I just maybe, um, like turned off some things where it like automatically brings it up uh like it's like oh automatically bring up on bag opening and automatically bring up on um like a guild store so like for that stuff like i'll turn that off just because i didn't want it to be brought up constantly uh lazy writ creator basically what i did was i just went to the first tra uh, like a first writ station a crafting station for my first time and it said do you want to use default settings and i said yes and then besides that i just came here and turned on auto craft that's literally all i did uh lib group socket i don't know what this is from so i just ignore that me at stealth text did not change potion maker did not change raid notifier you could do this as needed for your specific raid your raid leader will tell you what to do 
Uh, in terms of Votan's minimap, this is the one I want to cover because it's the one I always get bombarded with questions about. If you guys want to move and resize your user interface, simply come down here and turn off lock position and size. Come to here, bring up your mouse, click this, and then you can drag it around. That's the big one I always get bombarded with questions about, so hopefully that does help. Um, in terms of my specific uh, settings, you can pause the video right here and take a look. Um, I haven't changed key binding zoom. If you want to take my look at my map appearance, you could also pause and take a look at these settings. This is what I have for my appearance. Um, and then fame drop debug I have off. Mini map settings. Uh, wow, pin sizes. I did not change that at all. Search box. I did not change at all. Um, and that is pretty much it, I think. Uh, in terms of the Sarconians, I just usually turn off auto relight UI on pack selection. I found that incredibly annoying. Um, and then in terms of, you're probably going to be like, Dots, you missed all of these libraries down here. Basically, what you're going to want to do is when you use Minion, which is the program that I use to install all of my add-ons, Minion.gg uh, is the website. Basically, when you install all these add-ons, it will tell you what um libraries you need so if you see for this is red right urx i click it and it'll tell me you're missing lib table functions a lot of the add-ons will automatically install some of the libraries as needed a lot of them will not so basically what you're going to want to do is when you install all my add-ons if you pull it up and you go wow basically nothing is working just come into your add-ons menu click the add-on go okay what library am i missing go to minion download that library reload your ui your add-on should pop up perfectly fine, or you might just have to come down here and enable and like manually click it to enable it, and then uh, you'll be able to actually enable the add-on of your choice. But I just download all the libraries as needed um, for my various add-ons. I also have this lib execution queue thing. I think that's also like a library too. You know, it's part of this whole thing. I don't know why it isn't listed down here, but um, just wanted to do that little quick explanation on libraries because that is something I do uh, typically get asked about. But that's going to be it, guys. That is my user interface and my add-ons and how I have them all set up. I typically run a very, very minimalistic um, user interface. I like to have a lot of information packed nice and sleekly. Um, not so much. I've seen some people's UIs and they're just absolutely overloaded and crowded with information. And for me, I just try to have the information that I legitimately care about would want to see in a fight. I don't care about like a lot of the extraneous extra stuff and I don't want stuff flying all over my screen. I want to be able to have a nice open view of the battlefield and what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I've had the same UI configuration for a while and I'm a huge fan of it. And if you are a fan of it as well, please smack a like on this video. If you have any questions or comments about my add-ons, feel free to leave them below. And of course, subscribe to keep up to date with all the gaming content I post here on the Dots Gaming YouTube channel. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, the Dots Gaming Let's Play channel, which you can find on my YouTube homepage. So thank you all so much for stopping by. I appreciate it very much. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next one.